Okay, so we're just going to do a calibration on a height and pressure. So when you're setting that up, you want to make sure that you've picked in the settings, the pneumatic setting, you've set your accuracy, your tank pressures and everything else. And then whenever you make a change, you've got to hit save down the bottom. So in this case, as soon as you change anything, it'll send you through to a calibration. We continue. And what we're looking for when you're setting up your height sensors, and we'll use the rears as an example on this, is you'll look at your settings there and you'll have half a volt, two and a half and four and a half. And what you want is the needles when you adjusting the car to be just below essentially quarter of a tank. So if we explain it like that, you can see that where this needle is there, it's just below there. Now it can be down near the half a volt, but it can't be below it. And then when you want to test your range, it has to be just past the three quarter mark. That's considered on our system to be a minimum of 50% travel. If you don't have a minimum of 50% travel, which is from the center point of your travel to the three quarter and the quarter mark, it won't calibrate. This is to make sure that you don't over travel the sensors and you'll always have a successful calibration if you're between those settings. So what we're gonna do now is just raise the vehicle up to its maximum height for a height and pressure system. We know on this car that it's just around 100 PSI in the rear and 130 in the front. You'll see that the needles themselves are past the three quarter mark on both the front and the rear. So when we go to calibrate this, it'll be all ready to go. I've already set this up in calibration mode, so at the moment it's waiting for me to hit the start button up on the top right. We're now waiting just for the tank pressure to catch back up. I'll just go through that again for you so you know what I'm talking about. The travel on the sensors is the important part to get right. So you'll see on this particular setup here that we're just below that 4.5 on the top right. Uh, I haven't got my sensor set even both sides, but you can do that. You can mess around with it and get the travel exact so that when the car is at right height, the left and the right needles for the front and the rear are sitting fairly even. You'll see that the backs I've got a little bit closer, but the fronts, I deliberately set this one up on the top here just to show you how far the travel can go to without being past where it needs to be. So what we'll do is we'll start the calibration. The car will air out. It's looking for the pressures and also for the travel to be within range. I already know that this one is because we've calibrated it before. It will then hit a series of timers where it gets to a point where it sees no further decay in the height. It'll do what it's doing now and shoot up to roughly 40% of the travel and then it will go through a series of pulses raising the car up at the moment it's waiting for the tank pressure to catch back up again so it'll go through a series of pulses it will take the car through different corners to see how travel on one corner affects another corner and this is how we calculate corner load corner load is the single most important part of any airbag suspension system if you don't have a way of measuring corner load, which is height and pressure, you can't determine when the car is on uneven ground and the car will become cross-jacked. Cross-jacking is essentially when the load on one corner is not even on, another, on an opposite corner. So you would have a, a bump in the road or a dip. It could be sitting in traffic. Uh, our system has a brake monitor. The brake monitor allows, allows us to pause any adjustments while we're driving and this will prevent any unwanted adjustments especially when you're sitting in traffic. So the tank pressure is caught back up again. It's now going through a series of small changes on each corner. You won't see a huge change in the pressure. You'll see on there that's the right rear that is slowly letting it down and it's looking to see what changes happen on the other corners. And you'll hear your valves clicking when they're on the adjustments on this. You probably won't hear it over the compressors. So 
now the tank's caught up again. We're at almost 200 psi. It's getting to the point now where it's up around 55-60% of its height. And at the moment it's just adjusting the front left and the right rear. It's now bringing the car back up again. And it does this in small increments because what it's doing is, as I said before, it's calculating the corner load. If you don't get your corner loads right, the car will always be unstable when you're driving it. So it's nearly at the end now, it's going to lift up. Once it gets up to around 80%, it'll come back down to 50% of travel. Make some minor adjustments and you should see success come up on the screen like it did there you hit ok and that is now finished and you'll see that all of the presets air out low ride lift have now all lit up so when you go to do your settings you'll go around and save each corner to where you want it so you'll measure your height from the wheel to the ground and you'll go around and you'll press and hold and it'll say that that's preset number two. If you want to raise it up, come up to lift. It's saved lift. And we'll now go to air out. We'll come back to ride. So we just did that for demonstration, but you would normally get a tape measure. What I find the best me method to do is you work with the heavy end first. So for this car, I would air out the back and then I would set the front heights so that they're even and then I would raise the back of the car up. And then once I'm happy with my ride position, I'd press and hold, ride and save that. And then I'd go and do the other two settings. And I find that is always the best method to get your pressures fairly even as well. So I hope this helps. If you run into any dramas, just remember we're online. You can get us on Instagram or Facebook.